<clears throat> uh, Neil, the recent Black Lives Matter protests sparked by the murder of George Floyd, and now with the verdict in the Breonna, Breonna Taylor case and many other related events too, have obviously brought so much attention towards police brutality, um, especially as it pertains to minority communities. I would like to know what have your personal experiences been like with the police over the years? Have you had any negative encounters or what's, what's your experience been? Um, so I've written about this and it's online if anyone wants to see it. It's just, it's called Reflections on the Color of My Skin. And I wrote that while uh, I live in New York City and I wrote that while there were protesters passing in, by my window, outside mm. my window. Uh, it was a mass of protesters um, en route from one place to another, but that just made it so much more uh, real. They're, they're not just images on CNN mm -hmm. or anywhere else. There's like this protesting there. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's complicated because um, I've been stopped many times by the police, many times. A few times there's speeding tickets. Okay, you get those, all right? All the other times I'm stopped by the police, there, is, there are no charges pressed. There are no, um, and nothing happens. So I would say over my entire life, I've probably been stopped by the police somewhere between 15 and 20 times. And I don't know how that compares with others. You know, I'm a law abiding citizen. And so, um, but I can say that other than the several times where you get a speeding ticket, okay, a deserved speeding ticket, other times I was stopped and no ticket was given. I was just stopped. Uh, I think it amounted to uh, a, a form of automotive stop and frisk, right? I was going to ask one time I was coming. There's one time I was coming over a bridge and... I think the speed limit was 45 and I might've been doing 50 and they pulled me over and then they made me do a sobriety test. Okay. And then they said, oh, we stopped because you were going a little fast on the other side. I said, okay, I, I didn't look. Thanks for telling me. I said, okay, you can go. Okay. So here's my point. Um, other than one case I can share with you, um, they were all polite in each case. They're not disrespectful. Um, and so no, I wasn't physically harmed. Mm. Um, but what you learn is that the more encounters you have with the police, the higher is the chance that one of them can go bad. Mm. And that's what this is all about. All right. If, if there's a 5% chance that an encounter with a police officer can go bad, and I've stopped 20 times, then I have one of those, then my statistics are not in my favor, okay? If you're stopped five times in your life or 10 times, you're well below that threshold. So, so, um, so it was just odd. And another time that they stopped, uh, I was stopped, and this is at night, and they said, uh, and they didn't tell you why they stopped you until they start asking all these other questions. So, and I see your license, fine, get out of the car. But please get out of the car, right? So I get out of the car. And then there's a question, who's the woman in the car? Well, that's my wife, all right? Uh, what do you have in the trunk? So I said, you know, just some greasy stuff. Can, can, you, can I open the trunk? Now, I could have said no, because that's my private property and you need a search mm -hmm. warrant. But then I, I don't have time for him to call in and wait for a search warrant. And, and plus, this escalates an encounter with a police officer. Yeah. And I was trained from childhood by my mother, as was my brother and my sister, how to interact with police. Okay? That's quite and, useful. And, uh, so how, so uh, let me say that differently. We're trained how to not get shot by the police. <clears throat> okay? Wow. And this began in the 1960s, right on up through the 70s. And then... We're empty nest, and then we then share this info with our children. So yes, I grant him access to my trunk, but I could have said, no, you don't have access to my trunk. 
well, then that would make him suspicious. And then he'd call it, you know, then all of a sudden that becomes something more than what it became. Okay. Uh, uh, but that's, again, he was polite, but firm and expected me to do everything that he said he wanted me to do, even if the request was outside of the rights that I am granted by the US Constitution. So uh, there's another case I was driving in Texas and a police car followed me in my blind spot for about 10 miles, just rode the blind spot. And that was curious. And I keep thinking, maybe they assume I'm a criminal. And if I see them, then I'll step on it and try to escape. And then there's a chase and then they call another police that I'm shot dead, right? So, um, so. Well, Neil, I wanna ask are... you, I wanna ask you a question that I'm, I'm a little hesitant to ask you because it's the, the situation in the US right now, um, like with the Black Lives Matter protest and all the police problems that we're having with minority communities, it's a very complex issue, but you're a person who thinks a lot about very complex issues and comes up with ideas and answers. So I wanna know, do you have any ideas for how the situation can be improved? What do you think? Yeah, and I recommended that in my, in my note, uh, reflections on the color of my skin. What I said was, um, we want to believe that there are only some bad cops, okay? That's what authorities will tell you, all right? And most cops are good, some are bad. We have to get rid of, them. we have to find the bad ones and never appoint them in the first place or use their conduct in the, you know, on the force to, to winnow them out, okay? Um, what I said was, I, I don't know how many bad cops there are, but what I do know is that, is it their culture, is it whatever forces are operating, you don't see good cops stopping the behavior of bad cops. Mm. And I thought to myself, if a third cop or a second cop, however many cops were on the scene with George Floyd, Boy. went up to him and said, no, dude, he said he can't breathe and pulled off the police. We would have that on video. Mm -hmm. That would be no less viral than any other video that we have of police being brutal. You know this. And so that would give us some confidence. Wait a minute, this was just a bad apple mm -hmm. that somehow got loose, okay? And um, I imagine how far that would go in restoring confidence in the role that police play in our lives. It's an excellent point. And, and but you don't see that. We've never seen that in any of these cases. Well, with George okay. Floyd in particular, the exact opposite is what was filmed. There were several the officers. The opposite. Now you can go back to Rodney King and yeah. how many officers were there? I don't even remember because there were so 12, many. Probably. Yeah, yeah. There was one who who might who looked like he was stopping an extra hit. Mm. But so, and, and I think that came out in the, in the, in the trials, right? Um, there, there's like one or two, but no one just said a, a higher level person, you know, a captain or whatever, didn't come to stop, right? You didn't see this. And so, so either you are a bad cop or you're complicit with bad cops. Yeah. That does not bode well for public confidence. So, no, I don't have an easy solution to all of this. Well, I think that, is, than, that is a relatively easy solution. Like if, if people do have different opinions and they don't want to see that going on, it's good well, to you get have that to, message out there. Go you ahead. have to change the culture. Whatever is the culture is they stick up for themselves. It's yeah. like a fraternity, right? Yeah. And you know, you'd expect that in any club, any fraternity, you, you stick up for your own, right? I, I get that. But... If sticking up for your own in this context destabilizes society, then maybe it's time to rethink that code that you're following. Well, I, and I, so, and by the way, police brutality is not new. It's been going on, like I said, that's why we had these lessons in my household yeah. as early as, as, as I can remember. So it's not new. What's new is you now know about it no matter where it happens in the country. Oh, George Floyd dies in police custody. It is national news. For decades, that was barely local news. Mm. Local news. Go back. Look at these cases. See what the coverage was. I'm telling you, 
if a if police killed a, a, a black person in a local t in a local city, the the neighboring county would, that would not be news in the neighboring county. But now everybody sees it and hears it, in a way that's progress, sort of, you know, that it doesn't get by without getting noticed and getting. And it sparked it sparked a national debate and it sparked a national discussion and a national and, and an international um, uh, internationally sympathetic marches as well. Yes, good. So it's, it's been extraordinary. It's an extraordinary time.